Hello everybody, welcome to a continuation of our initial live session where we were talking with Dr. Takar, talking about um, the dental residency option for foreign trained dentists. So just, just basically part two. We just need to do that before Instagram kicks all of us out, which is, which is something I know they love to do. So I'm just gonna wait for Dr. Um, Radika to like come back on. And then I'll send her the invite. And then just know that I already um, noted down the questions from the previous live session. So don't worry, like, don't be worried. Um, we're gonna. And then, like I said, at the end of the, at the end, or towards the end of the session, the live session, we're gonna take um, questions, okay? Hi, Dr. Radika, hi. Nice to have you back. So let's just dive right into it, okay. So I was, gonna, I was saying, um, can we just go over like what the documents that are needed for the application? So first of all, you're going to need your pass application, um, your transcripts, okay. ECE or WES evaluation, just a basic, your, okay. your resume, three letters of recommendation, your statement of purpose, your TOEFL, mm -hmm. that's it. Mm -hmm. Like the pretty basic, same as CAPIT, okay. like same as yeah. mm, same and as here I would yeah. like to say for a TOEFL, uh, I would recommend to get more than 100. So, okay. Mean, okay. Because TOEFL is one thing that we can keep improving. We cannot improve GPA. GPA is done, it's done. Yeah. You cannot mm -hmm. go back in time mm -hmm. and improve mm -hmm. that one. So, TOEFL, mm -hmm. you can give mm -hmm. as many times as you want, and it is more the better. More okay. than 100 is better. So don't yeah. be discouraged if you mm -hmm. get 95 or something. It's okay. I mean, give one more time. There's okay. nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So that is one mm -hmm. thing. And here, I, I just want to say the pass, um, the application number for your far pass um, program okay. number if somebody, if anybody interested mm -hmm. and here is another program okay. which is very good uh, university of florida age mm -hmm. for internationally educated Korea. dentist okay so also a very okay. good program okay. and another thing mm -hmm. that i want to say like uh, this is your application okay so when program director sees okay. your application like take kind of have an idea about your achievements and your dentistry about your what you have done mm -hmm. so for interview mm -hmm. they are more looking to uh, see your personality uh, because end okay. of the day like whoever applies and who have finished application all are good candidate. like everybody's mm -hmm. smart everybody's academically yeah. well qualified educated like Everybody has research experience, volunteering experience, master's, so they don't have a shortage of good candidates. Because, to be honest, candidates, they, yes. they yes. do have a lot of options to choose from. So, for example, mm -hmm. if the two candidates have exactly same copy-paste profile, copy-paste, same master, same total, profile. same everything, what makes a difference mm -hmm. is your interview. Uh, what makes a difference mm -hmm. is your personality, like your uh, uh, your soft skills, like how kind you are, mm -hmm. humble. Like they have to see your passion, your hard work, like a kindness, like those likability, vulnerability, funny. Like they have to see you as a person. If you mm, can make mm, them laugh mm, or if mm. you can make them remember you, mm -hmm. uh, that would make mm. a big difference. Make, that will make a good difference, yeah. And I'm happy that you said that because honestly, at the end of the day, like, once you're out there, like, you've gone through the whole residency program, you're going to be treating human beings. You're going to be treating machines, robots. So it's I, I can understand why they want to see your personality to see if you'll be like a good fit because again you know it's thinking about the whole picture when you come out and you're practicing your representation of the program that you finished from 
So you don't want to see where you're walking somewhere and patients are like complaining like, oh, that doctor is a friendly and all that. And they're like, oh, yes. where did she finish from? University of Oxford. Awesome. <laughs> you know? Nobody um, wants that. Yeah, sometimes yeah. we sound overconfident and uh, like, because sometimes we like, oh, mm. I'm proud of my achievement. I have to say this, you know, but they want to see mm. like, if you are teachable, you know, mm. like mm. if you are, yeah, we know yeah. you have done a lot of things in your life and that's why you are getting interviewed because you're smart, but we also want to, directors, they also want to know if they can teach you. If you can, can learn mm. and if you can adapt mm. to a new new country, you know, like like how we did dentistry in our countries could be a little different mm -hmm. than US. Mm -hmm. they, they want mm. to see like if you can adapt mm. to new culture, you can adapt to work with different mm. people, different ethnicity, different background, different people. culture. If you can mm -hmm. mix with everybody and you can be a team player. Okay. Okay, so what you're saying now is basically how to make yourself stand out in the interview. So we're definitely going to go into that more later. So in the application process, is there a way you can make yourself like everything you said now, is there a way you can maybe show it in your application or make yourself stand out in your application? It is possible. Is it possible? Like, uh, so for example, okay. you... Um, when you write a statement of purpose, some programs do have an option of okay. writing a specific statement for individual program. So, so more you customize program, it, yeah. more better. More you do your homework and more you understand okay. the program. Okay. Like you have to know okay. in and out before you go there. It shouldn't okay. be sound like yeah. your application, yeah. like a window shopping, throwing everything like applying <laughs> everywhere going everywhere mm -hmm. and see whatever sticks and see whatever works mm -hmm. it shouldn't look like yeah. that from application okay so it should look like basically from your application it should look like um you have done your due diligence in researching the school like you you, you should yes. come up like you know a lot about the school not like you're just applying by by the way and then also look for a way for your personality to also show in your personal statement as well you know what i always um say this a lot like in your personal statement that's like your first introduction of who you are and so once they read your personal statement the admission committee should have an idea about who you are what your values are what you stand for what your personality is like so i'm very happy that you said that so, um, did you have like a game plan? So, what, was that your game plan when you were applying, or did you have like a different game plan so for your for application? Me, like, personally, my game plan was to be here. That's it. Nothing else matters. So, okay, I, okay. So, I worked here okay. so much before. So, my application was like a minimum part of my, you know, because mm. everybody knew me as a person okay. before even they get to see my resume. Okay. So it was different, yeah. but still yeah. I would say like in your resume okay. or anything, don't write something which sounds shady or confusing. Okay. You write okay. Okay. just okay. random okay. things without specifics and they feel mm. like, are you lying? Mm. Mm. Sound clear. Specific. Exactly mm. what mm. you did, exactly mm. what it is don't make things up because that's a mm, red flag mm, they don't mm. even want to see you in interview mm. your application sounds mm. like a mm. made up mm. like made, and made, made up. up yes okay okay and the thing is that a lot of these people are, yeah a lot of people do that and the thing is people don't know that a lot of people who are in the admission committee they're They've been doing this for years, yes. so they can tell exactly when it's made up. So don't yeah, made yeah, up things. Yeah. And like, if you have experience, for mm. example, like okay, January to March, this office I was working as a dental assistant. Then, then March to June, this office. <laughs> then June to th you're just filling the gaps. You, I mean, how yeah. can you keep changing your yourself with every three months? 
yeah 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 it's that very, makes yeah, sometimes people say okay i was working in the day here and night here i was working two jobs but like make it realistic if it is truth add some substance mm-hmm. to it mm-hmm. like like if you feel like so, your application yeah. uh, you show your application to somebody random and if they can ask you a question what is this this doesn't make sense you know have some mm. other perspective from your friends or from somebody yeah. else who doesn't know you so if they mm-hmm. find it suspicious mm-hmm. or find it made up then you better mm-hmm. change it or mm-hmm. or maybe explain it mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. you can write in additional comments or additional other info like i was going through this i was going through injury or i was going through family thing i was there is a gap in my resume or i i was pregnant like like i don't know but like justify whatever you need yeah justify yeah like let your let your application make sense. so this is my rule in life if you're going to send something over to somebody else let it make sense to you like so i think that's what you're trying to say like let your application make sense to you if it doesn't make sense to you it's not going to make sense to anybody else and i'm happy you said that like if you feel like um you know you've tried to make the application look good make sense and you feel like you still need to further explain yourself you can always attach like a, a word document like a document explaining like things in the application that would need further explanation because there's sometimes when no matter what you do you still need to explain further so i'm happy to say that that's a very good point like, that's a very very good point in your application because yeah. they don't want to yeah. see yeah. fake yeah. things in a person they don't even want to invite for interview mm. like and if you can mm. you can also mm. say be genuine like for example if somebody ask you what is your weakness what whatever it is you have to show them that this is my weakness and this is what i'm doing to work on it to improve it mm. like more genuine mm. you are mm. more mm. human you are and they want real people they don't want mm. a show mm. off your uh, over the top everything they want real normal resident yeah it's normal people yeah and, and yeah and, and it's also very important that like you like what you just said they also want people that they can teach you know you don't want people who will be like a problem arguing with the faculty yes. the lecturers <laughs> trying to prove it so no 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 one wants to do that yeah so team work like all these yeah. things are important like if you have a hobby like share it you know like mm-hmm. i like piano then share yeah. it Just, like if you have manual dexterity yeah. skills like painting or something hand skills you can show it there is it's mm-hmm. it's fun and they're mm-hmm. going to remember you mm-hmm. you don't have to be afraid mm-hmm. of sounding mm-hmm. different more unique you are more special mm-hmm. you are you don't, mm-hmm. you don't have to copy mm-hmm. everybody mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. you have to be mm-hmm. you <laughs> No, so no, no. like I I think a lot of people don't understand that, but it's very important that your personality shows at every point in your application. Like so I think it's very important that you say so that. So here yeah. is yeah, the sure. masters in prosthodontics for international dentist. So here is a list of okay. uh, universities. Okay. Uh, feel free to take a picture. I just put it together because this was one thing that i was interested okay. before like i still love prosto but like i don't want to okay. do masters in mm. prosto i like G- being a general dentist and do my own cases but this is pretty yeah. good list for international dentists and you can practice in few mm. states after you do okay. prosto okay after you do the masters in prosto don't think exactly. you can actually practice so this is something states. nice right. thing right. to look for it yeah. if you want to So this is that and okay. this right, one is mm-hmm. Minnesota so here like this is I haven't done anything or I don't know anybody personally but this is from the website mm-hmm. um, they accept okay. license application from international dentists without additional training and they evaluate each application case to case basis okay and then yeah. decide who qualifies for that Okay, before we go into the before we go more into the masters, let's just um we um I was going to ask you one question about the interview process. Um just so that we don't lose track. 
um, can we talk about the interview process and then we can now come back to talk about the masters, like masters, because that's another, that was a question someone asked about masters that can give you like a licensing option. So is it okay if we talk about the interview yep. and then we can come back to this? Is that okay? Okay. So, all right. So let, let me just ask you about the interview process. So what, what, I mean, I'm going to let you just tell me everything. Like what was the interview process for you? And then what are the tips that you also have to people who so want like, to also So you also have to know that every program director and every program is a different interview uh, guideline, different process. Yeah. True. But the mm. most common and basic yeah. things are like, tell me about yourself. That's the first and foremost, I okay. think, the common question. So in that question, okay. you have okay. to, like, the first rule for any interview is, like, we have million things to talk about ourselves right? like mm, but you have, have to condense mm. it in five minutes or like like couple two minutes yeah. and this is a very important tip you have to customize your tell me about yourself answer according to the school so for okay. example Got if it. university of rochester they are more research based or if i have a research background and that i want to put emphasis i i want to put highlighter about myself like here here <laughs> i want to highlight and because it has to be right yeah. match you know if you talk about something about yourself mm. you amazing extraordinary things but for them it means nothing then mm. what is the mm. point mm. Mm. So you mm, have to mm, have mm. your tailor-made, customized answer for each program, each each job interview. Like if you're going for a dental assisting job, you have to have a different answer. If you are going for a dentist mm. job, as an associate dentist job, they want to hear more about clinical dentistry and what other skills you are interested in. They want to hear that aspect. Who the, okay. your answer okay. should okay. be based on person in front of you because you don't want okay. to do something okay. fake okay. or wrong okay. but you want to make sure that you give them what they're looking for what they're looking for mm. even, got it got it got even, it okay. i want to go even in micro detail for each program director you should have a different answer of yourself answer for based on them. their personality okay. based on their role in the industry for example if somebody is oral surgeon and who is a program director so and who is looking for certain traits personality or something you have to think about it and customize it there is nothing mm. wrong about it okay. because we have million things mm. about ourselves we can say whatever part of mm. our story choose we can pick and choose we have million from ourselves so we yeah. have to pick and yeah. choose yeah. smartly yeah. according to the other person and i would highly recommend person. reach out okay. to the residents of that program where you are getting interviewed okay so at okay. least you know okay. basic okay. like okay how many interviews there will be mm -hmm. and there is no rocket science like i mean you can go to facebook groups you can find mm -hmm. out who are the residents you can ask the reception or admission uh, registrar office that if it is possible can i please uh, uh, connect with any existing resident i'm, I'm really confused and mm -hmm. um, it would be great help i want to talk you can re reach out that way you can reach out from okay. facebook instagram like nowadays mm -hmm. world is open you know like so that's like you can yeah. google yeah. AGD residents and you can see my name there. So like yeah. whatever okay. program okay. you are applying, at least know about that before you go for interview. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that way you will be well yeah. prepared. Like yeah. will, will it be one interview, three yeah. interview? Will there will be a bench test? What mm -hmm. kind of questions? Mm -hmm. It's not like a cheating or anything. Mm -hmm. It's just being prepared. Mm. No, no, thanks. Like that's not cheating. Yeah, you're right. Like it's always, and you're, you, I, I feel like any program director would appreciate the effort. Like, okay, this person exactly. knows about our program, so this person definitely 
maybe once to come to the program. So I think they would have. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that would be. For example, and you can also no. ask the existing yeah. residents, uh, existing students of that program, mm -hmm. what is something unique or what is something they like about it. So you might know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. some details which is not in online or not available on website mm -hmm. because from the people who are yeah. already there. Mm. and you can even read mm -hmm. blogs about residents you can google up not just website website is basic mm -hmm. everybody read web mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you can go a little mm -hmm. deeper mm -hmm. you can go mm -hmm. to different groups you can mm -hmm. see what other blogs or anything from residents or any events or if they celebrated something you can put something in in interview oh i saw this uh, amazing event that you guys had for christmas that was so fun that that is so interesting i okay. it's, it's like a mm. good work family environment and i'm looking forward to have a program yeah. where where it is like work family where we can celebrate okay. festivals together okay. we can bring different food we can share our cultures so i like that kind of vibe so you can share like like a human mm. side you know it's not okay. everything research or All not right. everything is uh, pure academic mm. yeah so like yeah yeah like you should be able to like tell them okay you should just show them basically like you know about the school so that's a very good and i like i like the way you said a day before interview <laughs> sometimes people do this <laughs> oh go on <laughs> yeah and, and honestly that's so so risky And I like the way that you said that. Um, sorry, I like the way you said to um, kind of like um, tie your answer to something that is related to the school. Like I always feel like that is such a, a good way to interview. Where you, in your mind, like regardless of whatever question they ask you, you always have an idea of what it is that you want them to know from a, a, a particular session. So you should always have those answers. Like okay, you know what? Even if they ask you about A, B. You answer A, B, but you also want them to see C as well. So I like the way you say, like, okay, even if you're answering, tell them something about the school that will show them that you also know about the school. So I think that's a very, very yes, good honestly, point that you made. Yes, you just because we're running out of time, we also have you know, like another thing. You don't have to memorize. Yeah. If they ask me this, I'm gonna say this. You you don't have to memorize sentences. Yeah. Because that way you're gonna be nervous mm -hmm. and you're gonna forget mm -hmm. and. the answer just keep in mm. your mind the bullet points that no matter what question they ask mm. these are my strength and i want to make sure i convey my five strength in the interview no matter what no matter how mm. i'm going to do my slipping in i'm mm. going to sneak up <laughs> i'm going to put my yes Yeah, you're gonna slip in those answers, even though they ask you something subtly, else. Just for a way to like, like a slip it right in, you know, like share, subscribe, kind of thing. <laughs> so like, <laughs> no, honestly, it's it's like a marketing tactic. You're so right. It yeah. is. It's like a marketing tactic. Yeah, Because that's they don't smart. know you. They are not your friends. Like, they mm. don't stalk you on Instagram. They don't know anything about you. So you mm. have it is. our job no. to let them know mm -hmm. about our strength so they can choose they can make a decision mm -hmm. so our job is to help okay. them okay okay mm -hmm. mm -hmm. sorry can i break in off there can you hear me now okay so um i guess right now let's just go straight into the questions because we have basically like a few minutes left and i'm trying to like keep this like into two okay. sessions if we have to go into a third session great mm -hmm. but i i don't want to take all your day today so all your time today rather so i guess the first question and then again um i forgot to say this at the beginning if you have any questions just write in the comment right. box like i'm reading and i'm writing down questions as well okay so the first question was um did you pay for the residency so you know your agd res residency program did you pay for it and then what was the tuition yeah. like you can just give like a rate 30000 per year have to like be specific so in this residency per year so, so in my it. residency then, you far we have to pay 30000 yeah. dollars but there is what another residency okay. university of maryland i think they pay you 15000 or 
thing but they you don't okay. pay yeah. zero tuition no tuition yeah. yeah i'm happy you said that because that was the next question the next question was are there residency programs that pay you so i'm happy you said that so basically you just have to do your research and find out which pays and which you have to pay for and then um so the other question was um so what other so i guess they're asking like what does the program entail like can you just give us like a brief summary of what you know what the program entails like what so you do basically so i see patients 9 to 5 8 to 9 is typically a class okay um uh, maybe 3 days a week 8 to 9 okay. and then all day patients 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 work 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 chop chop, chop. and we do okay. all kind of procedures extractions oral surgery sinusoidal implants mm. perio prosto denture partial composites veneer you name it and we do it invisalign ortho like each and every mm-hmm. procedure and mm. our schedules are mm-hmm. super tight mm-hmm. i mean 45 minute for one patient and move, move, move. oh wow and you move We see wow, our patient cancels. <laughs> that's really insane. Our reception staff is so smart. They put in emergency, fit in emergency, and they fit it off. So it's pretty <laughs> intense. So it's like a you're you're always on the move. That's good. So the next question was, um, so would you advise? Okay, so example, like, would you advise a fresh graduate, like someone who is fresh out of school? to like out of so i'm guessing this is like an international dentist who's fresh out of school in their country would you apply them to go for so to apply for a residency thing program is, it will be difficult to even get it because they need people oh, who have okay. experience most mm. if mm. not a clinical mm. experience mm. then something else you know like masters preceptorship volunteering research exp- like they need something extra So I'm not sure if you okay. can get it just do it just roll with it. <laughs> okay. You got yeah. to save money. And, yeah. And you cannot <laughs> just break into your head. Yeah. Don't underestimate yeah. yourself even if you are fresh yeah. graduate don't underestimate. You going to do it. Don't underestimate. So that kind of like answers my next question where they said uh this person said do you have to be exceptionally skilled like do you have to be like um like exceptionally skilled or do you um or so basically i guess what they are saying is you know how you just said now that you know they they train you and everything so do you have to have like a baseline exceptional skill or it's okay for it's just coming with your basic dental skills it, it it would be beneficial if you have it if not like you are in the program they're going to teach you they're going to mentor you yeah some some residents learn slow some do faster so i mean everybody is accommodating and it's a learning experience so okay so no problem okay. you know don't feel bad about anything just just roll with it you're going to do it okay. trust yourself okay. trust yourself okay 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 perfect and then um maybe i'll ask this question last um So this person is asking that you know how you were saying that there's a university that offers the online masters so I guess they were just asking for the name of the school um so the name of the school is ATSU so you guys can just google that what I'm going to do is when I'm editing the videos I'm going to all this information I'm going to get it from Dr. Radhika and I'm going to put it in the edit of the video so that you guys can like Here. you know if you want to do more research and all that so that's the school So the MPH Masters in Public Health. If you want to do a screenshot, you can do a screenshot. But I'm going to put it in the edit of the video. So let me just write that down, just so that you guys can, you know, do your further research if you want to. Um, states of practice. Okay. So the next question is, um, do you think it's better to? Do you think the residency route is better than going back to school? So I'm guessing they are comparing yeah. it to the whole year advanced like, standard. I was just checking my um, uh, report for how many patients I did like 3000 appointments. I'm like I, I wasn't it didn't make sense to me like in 2 years. Like so many extractions, like 500 300 or more extractions. 
surgical extractions implants i'm like that that is pretty good so the thing is like more clinical experience yeah. you have more you will be valuable for the business so for for example mm. if you do dds and you look for a job like they will ask you clinical experience mm. they don't care they just need a life they don't care how you mm. got it they don't care yeah. how well you are yeah. it's all about mm-hmm. the money it's all mm-hmm. about the business are you efficient mm. can mm. you do five crown traps can mm. you do root canals can you do implants mm. can you do dentures because if somebody paying you as a dentist they want to make sure you mm. can do the job and more mm. efficiently so, yeah yeah so it's been exactly. more so about so for ex- like this have. program is making me more profitable so i can do more work mm. now because of this is intense stressful like i got the speed i didn't thought that i would get this speed i can do so many composites and i can do so many extractions mm. in a day like more you do it more mm. you are better at it and more you are profitable so more mm. it's you know you mm. have to think about other way yeah so you are basically being exposed to more in terms of like your clinical experience yeah. which is very very important because honestly like yeah like you just have to figure out what works best for you like are you looking for experience are you looking for skills and you know two different things even if you're looking for skills you can also go to the rest exactly. of the program yeah well. even yeah. after dds yeah. or advanced standing you can still go for a agd residency to make yourself residency. better residency yeah to yeah. give you yeah. more confidence more skills mm-hmm. more mm-hmm. growth and you know sometimes people go for aspen or some mm. dso dental chains after dds and they learn a lot mm. like you you can mm. learn as long as you are willing to learn and improve mm-hmm. no fact so i guess let's just do the next question so um so someone let me just ask this question so someone is asking that when does the application start so like basically when does and then before you even answer the question i wanted to say this so for the ada for the ada pass it's basically like a um a centralized application portal where you put in your application and then yep. they send off your application to the schools that you have selected it's- to want to apply to so the question is when does the application start like for example in a year like when does the application uh-huh. cycle usually start or pass or for i think for the residency may- program rather like I, i right now i forgot in may exactly okay. you have to check updated okay. but like i think it was around that time yeah so it just yep. starts may of the new year so basically for 2023 yeah. is going to start in may all right so this question is asking like um so so someone was asking so you know how you said that you did like a preceptorship right so does that help with your clinical pro- file for your application so clinically how it helps is uh, you cannot do patients patients but at least i did a lot of hands on courses okay the part of preceptorship okay. so indirectly i did work on okay. my clinical skills with course so okay. at the end they want to okay. see like how did you improve yourself with the resources you have so it does help yeah. indirectly okay so, so it helps indirectly but you're not actually doing anything but it helps ex- with exposure and indirectly helps with your clinical skills all right got it and then you know how you were saying that you don't recommend bust um university the pro- the preceptorship program um with university of boston so so i was so asking I like, why don't very, you recommend very very good that reason for it so let me show you what I have a very valid reason for it. So, uh, why? Because Boston okay. University uh, preceptorship is only three months, and yes, it is only three months of preceptorship. So it is very cheap, mm. like cheapest, I think. So, mm. so in three months, uh, like it is not logical, or if it's not uh, easy to make connection or learn or. get involved so it is not even mm-hmm. a one semester okay that you can do for three months are you so serious? it is not even a, oh my god so it is not serious? even a semester to do your courses or exams or classes 
so basically you are just shadowing like nothing else literally nothing else so it doesn't give you okay. more opportunities okay. to work with faculty work with residents work with everybody take courses classes so and in 3 months like in in us saturday sunday is weekend so how many days in a month 22 days in a month and then you you first two weeks are orientation or getting your hipa or getting your health certificates oh, or oh wow so you're not really doing much basically so you don't you don't really it's have like, enough time in the so program period i know that orientation or getting your health certificates your vaccines or whatever whatever and then there is a public holiday somebody on vacation i'm like and then last week you are ending on 28 or something i'm like there is literally no time not the no time your relationship with your faculty or do more contribution to the program you know not much time to take course mm-hmm. class presentation or involve yourself yeah so if you are yeah. not putting in anything okay. it's cheaper 2 3 months then how mm-hmm. can you expect mm-hmm. to get more reward mm-hmm. Okay, got it. So you're saying that it's not really enough time for you to actually um achieve your goal of why you even want to do your perceptorship, which is really to be a part of the school Because and then let them know like who you check are. Off, you know, it's perceptorship is not like okay, you check mark. Mm-hmm. Okay, you got this. You did this. You did. This. Yeah. You actually actually have to benefit from the program. And so you don't have enough time. Another right, report is super important so in 3 months. they don't know you enough they don't write you a letter of recommendation yeah that's the biggest problem oh really and that's something you definitely need right so for that, your application because you know mm. even if they write it they don't know you enough so their letter of recommendation is going to be very they won't deep. write something they gonna, yeah they say okay i have mm. seen this person for a couple mm. weeks in university of boston hanging around with id card i'm like <laughs> does it even mean anything mm. so it doesn't mean anything so but yeah, if you it do it anywhere for example i put it here mm. anywhere preceptorship which is 6 months or 1 year mm. then you have more mm. immersive mm. experience like more detail you can participate mm. contribute you can like make the best out of it then if you have a letter of recommendation mm. from one of the director or a head of department or somebody it brings value it brings substance it is genuine and truthful and they will have more stories or okay. more more things to talk about you to talk about got it so basically what you're saying is because of the length of time is reason is the reason why you wouldn't recommend the reason, professorship with boston another reason all right when i so, applied okay. for boston Um mm-hmm. yes when mm-hmm. i got acceptance letter mm-hmm. from boston preceptorship they sent me an email yeah. with a disclaimer mm-hmm. acceptance mm-hmm. to this program doesn't okay. doesn't mean you will be getting acceptance to this it, it was a very harsh like a uh, by default email like, okay not, nothing personal but they yeah they yeah. they give yeah. disclaimer to everybody multiple times that this program doesn't mean you will get acceptance to dds program if they are saying 10 oh. times to you that don't expect mm. us to consider you or give you priority or anything for the don't the, expect the anything from yeah. us is yeah. just like a check mark in your yeah. resume yeah. that okay you did yeah. this like a basic yeah. check, check mark yeah so okay. so why you okay. do it okay got it so basically they send you that disclaimer just to let you know that Even though you're doing this, this does not give you priority for the advanced study program. That's the reason. All right, got it. Perfect. I'm happy that you said that. Thank you. So yeah, of course. So they just like let you know way ahead of time. And honestly, so what was even the point of you doing the preceptorship? Somebody else is asking about um. So after AGD, how many yeah. states can one practice? So I said it already that once we once I'm once I'm ready to put the video out, I'm going to edit it and put a link of the page. that Dr. Radike was talking about how um like there's a page on the past website where they tell you oh when you do this this is the limitations you have in terms of where you can practice so just reach, just watch out for the video i'm going to put it out um 
because a lot of people are asking that question what things can you practice after a residency other than AGD and where do you find this information so again I'm going to put a link and then you guys can find that information oh I think we lost Dr. Radikiv there one second Let's just wait for Dr. Radikin to come back on. So yeah, I'm going to put, when I edit the video, I'm going to put a link there for where you can find that information. Hmm. Let's just wait for her to join back. I don't know what's going on. Um, so, so another question is, is it recommended to, okay, so I'll wait for Dr. Radikin to come answer that. Um, Just going through a little questions. Is it recommended to do an internship before applying? Let me see. Let me send an invite back to her. And let's bring her back in. So I've sent an invite back to Dr. Radhika. So, so it says, can we practice dentistry after doing an M a master's in dental public health? Okay, so I'm going to, I think I wrote that already. Okay. After masters, I read that already. Cause it's looking like we might have to do like a third live session, which I'm trying to avoid. <laughs> so let's see what we can do. Is going back to school better than doing the program? In your opinion? So, um, she, you know, the, the doctor already mentioned that in her case, doing the residency was much better. Because in terms of like you not know, having to pay back such a huge loan, that was that was um key for her, and in sense of it's giving her the opportunity to have more clinical experience because she's seen a lot of patients, like almost like three thousand patients since she started. It's saying that she's unable to join. Mm, not really sure what's going on. Let's try that again. So I sent you another invite. Um, okay. So yeah, let's just wait for her to join back. Um, so yeah, basically going back, to, I, I don't think one is better than the other. I think it's just a matter of what your needs are. For her, she said she's having more exposure to like more, like more clinical exposure. So I think it just really depends on what works for you, what your needs are. She's having more clinical exposure and that just works for her. And she also didn't want to have like this hum huge amount of loan on her. Honestly, that in itself is a huge relief for, for some people. So it really depends on what works for you. But again, with a residency, there's also a limit in terms of like what state you can practice in. So like I said, I'm going to put in a link into the video edit just so that you guys can... Um, join just so that you guys can hit the link and it will take you to like the website or the past website where you can see that information for yourself do you need to be licensed to practice before okay, i'll wait for her to yes i'm definitely gonna do a recap um yes i'm definitely don't worry i got you guys i'm definitely gonna do a recap um let me hmm i don't know why that is happening yeah, let me. Yeah, I can see you trying to join back in, Doctor Doctor Radikia. So let me try it again. I don't know what's going on with Instagram. Let Let's give it one more try. That doesn't work. <laughs> oh, I was just about to say that you know what? If that doesn't work, then I'm gonna have to like do a yeah. third session. Yeah, it looks like I'm gonna have to do a third session. Are you up Dr. for it? Yes, let me. Are you up for it? Yep. Okay, so let's um let's wait until let's just keep on going ahead. But once I get a notification saying that the live session will end, I'm gonna let you guys know that we just start another one. Um, but um, so another person. So let's just go through. I wanna go through the questions here. Um, and then before I take the rest of the questions. Okay, so let me see. Where did I stop? One second. One second. Um, Okay. 
Okay. So this person is asking, is it recommended to do an internship before applying to the AGD program? Uh, like in our home country internship? Like, so I'm guessing an internship here. Like, is it something that is recommended for the residency program? Like, I don't know. Like internship, receptorship, fellowship, whatever gives you more experience. <laughs> Just do it. Right, advantage, yes. Just do it. Because you're right. Because even, the, because like the professorship exactly. is almost like an internship, right? It's just more so where you have, you're paying to shadow. So whatever shows that you're trying to improve yourself in dentistry, just, just go for it. So the next question is, um, can we practice after doing a master's Texas. in dental public health? Texas. Can we practice dentistry after doing a master's in so in Texas, so you can. Please right, check updated okay. new rules or whatever. But this was according to the last information. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. So the next question is, um, so after dental public health, one can get licensed. Well, you answer that question. So the same the question. Talking about license to practice after the dental public health. So Dr. Redica said you can practice in Texas, but it's always good to check the up-to-date information because obviously things get updated regularly. So this question, next question is, is going back to school better than doing the program in your opinion? I already answered this question, so you we can know, move on. Work, anything um, is better than staying licensed? in this country and working as a dental assistant <laughs> or dental hygienist. Anything is better. Yeah. One more thing, yeah. one more thing I want to share. Okay. So, share. Um, you know, uh, okay. I didn't Wait, okay. know that we can practice as a foreign trained dentist, we can practice in Florida without education. Like without oh, really? a hygienist course, we just have to do like an exam and we can get our license to be a hygienist. Oh, really? So exactly. You have to write Just like our exam. ADEX exam, Amazing. you know, right? That yeah. one, our ADEX exam, CODA, um, um, ADEX yeah. or RAB exam, very similar to that one, mm -hmm. um, like practical on Typhoon scaling mm -hmm. and um, very, yeah. very yeah. easy, like yeah. super easy exam. And that, you can that's so get good. Paid. Yeah. Because honestly, one of the things that I was gonna, one of the things that I was gonna leave you to talk about was other career options that people can do. So there's actually a section for that. I just wanted us to go to the questions before the live session ends, okay? And then, um, so I'm definitely gonna, because I also want you to talk about the masters you can do to, 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 and then that will give you an opportunity to practice. I also want you to talk about that. So we'll probably just do that after the questions. But I want to get through all these questions because once the live session ends like it's all going to be lost um do you need to be licensed to practice before okay do you need to get a license to practice before getting into like a not for all the program? programs that's why i like they have 700 programs okay. and we are qualified without license only like couple programs that's why i shared the list of programs oh. okay all right got it and then the next question is, is it hard to get into a residency program? I think we all know the answer to that. Yes, it is. But so that's why it's very, very impossible. important for you to like, find a way for you impossible. to stand out. Not impossible. Yes. Very, very important. Not impossible. Like you can do it. You can do it, but it's not easy, right? But it's not impossible. That's why you have to find a way for you to stand out in your application. Like just do whatever you, you can. How hard is it to get a oh, preceptorship? preceptorship mm. I think it's not bad. Like, I mean, it is pretty straightforward. They, they don't make it complicated for preceptorship. Okay. All right. So the next question is, did you find... <laughs> okay. You guys. So I think we have to do a third session because questions are like just flowing in and I want people to have all the answers of questions answered. So let me just... Let me take this one. So it says, what is the name of the exam in Florida ADEX. to practice as a ADEX. dental assistant? ADEX. I'm going to hold that ADEX. question. ADEX. ADEX. Yeah. So, because I want you to elaborate more on it, but that will be our next session. So just hold on. For those of you that want to know about it, just hold on until after the questions. So the next question is saying, did you find on the state dental board website if you need AGD or different <laughs> residents to practice. It is confusing on their website. I'm not sure what keywords to so, look for. 
Okay. Uh, okay. Let me see. Yes, it is very confusing. So you always, always look yeah. for is two year. So they're gonna mention yeah. either one of the two. One is one they're gonna say okay. advanced standing DDS program that everybody knows. That okay. is DDS. Okay. But if they mention okay. two years of CODA accredited residency program. So it, it's two year of okay. CODA accredited okay. program means anything. It could be DDS, okay. it could be AGD, it mm -hmm. could be GPR, it could be Perio, Prosto, it could be anything. If they say two years CODA okay. accredited program and they don't specify okay. DDS, okay. then it means anything. If they specify only DDS, okay. two year of DDS or advanced training, that means they don't uh, take the other kind. They want only DDS. The DDS. Okay. Yeah. And then even the even the website where because I even the website where Dr. Radke was talking about um what um like what programs would give you what type of license. Like I said, I'm gonna put a link in the edit. I'm also gonna give Dr. Radke an opportunity as well to go over that because I think that's also what they're talking about in terms of it's confusing. So maybe once we're done with the questions, we'll go back to that and then have her give like a detailed explanation because I think that is very, very helpful and for this is people. the answer for the next question hygiene. says, what did you, yeah, for sure. So the next question says, what do you need to do? So you know how you were saying that, um, you, you you did like a state like a licensing exam for to become like an yes. implant fellow so i guess they're asking like what did you need to submit apart from the exam what else did you need to submit to become to become a part of like the implant fellow okay academy for, or the implant for academy that yeah one, that's the question i have shared it here so this was different this is not academic fellow. This was my program, mm -hmm. which I did it for my education. And after, uh, okay. then you just apply to here. Let me show you. You go on here. American Academy of Implant Dentistry okay. Fellow Examination. So there are two parts of okay. the exam. One is the written exam and another one is the oral exam. Mm -hmm. So so okay. I started with the written exam because at that time, uh, written exam, mm -hmm. is, which is in my control and case uh, presentation was not in my control. So I, I finished this one and now okay. I prepare. So for this one, you don't need anything, just application, basic. Okay. They just need to see okay. you are a dentist. Mm -hmm. Okay. Doesn't matter you are dentist in okay. US or doesn't matter you are dentist in your home country. So for oh. this, anybody oh, can okay. give it. Like okay. anybody, you just have a membership and okay. apply for this exam. It is very easy. Okay. But if you want to do practical exam, okay. uh, they're changing rules now. That mm -hmm. Now you don't have to do case yeah. uh, your own case. This. They can give you their uh, implant cases and you just have to do treatment plans and evaluation on their pictures and their cases. So now, now, oh, really? I, now you okay. can even okay. do your practical exam without uh, being a dentist in the U.S. But that okay. is pretty good credential. Okay. Like Perfect. Very, like a valuable yeah. credential. Yeah. That's a good, yeah, that's a good, uh, that's something good to have on your application like that i know that's something i'm also thinking about as well so that was a good question so um the next question says um okay so again this is tied back to limits on the state license so we'll give you time to We'll give you time to go over that again because a lot of people are asking that. Um, okay, so this person is asking, did you, so you know how you were saying you did a preceptorship, you did a fellowship. So did you get like a, like a certificate or a license? I know you already showed us the certificate for the preceptorship. Did you get one for your fellowship uh, or did you get a license? 
So let me show you that one. Here. So this is the one that I got after my fellowship. So this is Eastman okay. Institute uh, for okay. Research Fellowship. I don't know if okay. you can see it. Okay. Yeah, we can see the University yeah. of Rochester. So yeah, this is a fellowship yeah. certificate. Okay. This so, is yeah. uh, uh, not okay. the license or anything, but this is no, no, for the fellowship graduation. Okay. So it's just basically a certificate that you can also use for your application for residency. No, no. It's not like you can practice yeah. after yeah. that or anything of that sort. Okay. Okay. So the next question is asking. So you know how you mentioned um, yeah. GPR? So the question is, what is the difference between that and the AGD? So, uh, so first of all a uh, gpr is a uh, is for dds and usually gpr programs they don't accept foreign trained dentists without dds so usually okay. that is out okay. of the option okay. If, okay. for as a first program like now i am eligible for gpr okay. after finishing agd or after finishing okay. advanced standing dds you can do gpr but without that usually that is okay. uh, not even possible they don't accept not even possible. Okay. Okay. But this is like All right. right. Okay. But basically the program is the same thing. Like it's just, it's basically the same thing like academic exposure, clinical exposure. It's just a matter of as a foreign trained dentist, you can't just yes. go directly and to a GPR. You have to do the AGD is, first. Uh, and GPR, GPR is more hospital focused. Like more you see fractures, oh. accidents, oh. more IV sedation, bigger procedures with medical, uh, medical doctors. It is in a ER setting or a big hospital setting where you are not the only person as a provider. There will be nurses, anesthesiologists, MD, surgeons, orthopedics. You work with everybody. So that is kind of okay. a big difference. Okay. You do more surgical, but you don't do like a composite or anything. Like you have limited exposure to the okay. core clinical like a crown and composites and you have more experience to okay. like a bigger picture of dentistry like accidents surgeries and okay. sedations kind of it but all the programs are different but okay. this is basic fundamental difference okay the french member of them all right got it thank you so much and then the next question was saying um <laughs> so what's the cost for the so i guess that they, they want to know how much um, the cost was for the preceptorship? What was the cost for so the fellowship? So preceptorship, as, well? as I said, if you want to do cheaper one, which is not rewarding, mm -hmm. uh, which is less, which is like less than ten thousand, yes. if it is cheaper one, uh, three months, okay. and if you want to do okay. six months, uh, usually it uh, the usually it is twenty thousand, fifteen to twenty thousand for six months. Oh. For six months. And then what about uh, for, for a the fellowship, fellowship? Usually it is thirty thousand dollars, but it varies. But like, but okay. you have to make sure mm. that you invest yourself enough to get the reward. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Do not, like just do not money. waste like your you're money actually in benefiting doing something from it. which is not going to give you any benefit. I always, always say mm -hmm. that one year of wasting your application cycle, like one year to get rejected, mm -hmm. you are wasting 200K. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because if you are mm -hmm. a dentist mm -hmm. sooner, mm -hmm. once you are licensed sooner, then you can start making 200K. Mm -hmm. So a year yeah. wasted yeah. is 200K. Exactly. <laughs> Your, your, skills, your skills are just your wasting, brain, your, your knowledge, away. your everything, you're wasting it, you know. So if anything you're going to invest, yeah. if it is less than 200K for any program, it's going to worth it. Okay. So someone is asking which of them is between 15,000 to 20,000. So that was talking about the perceptorship. Again, it depends on what yes. program that you apply to because yep. the longer the perceptorship program is, the more yep. expensive yep. it's going to be. So right now we've gone through all the questions that have been sent over to me. So now I'm just going to give you time to just talk about um, 
what other career options you have as a foreign trained dentist? I know you mentioned um, using a master's in public health. You can also practice in um, Texas. You talked about Thank doing you. the edX exam for dental hygiene. So just let me give you the floor. Just tell us everything. All so the other that things you, you can do, you can work as a dental assistant as we always start. It's a big mm -hmm. But okay. then you can mm -hmm. learn other skills being a dental assistant, like how to manage a dental practice. You can you can learn insurance side, you can run, mm -hmm. uh, learn reception front side, everything. And then you can become a dental mm -hmm. practice manager, office manager. You, mm -hmm. you can, if you don't mm -hmm. want to go Florida and become a hygienist, hygienist can get paid $35 per hour, even $40 per hour. So you're saying for the... So for the hygienist, you're saying you do for the Florida. ADEX exam only and then you for right Florida away. and then you can become a hygienist. One month, basically. So that's all. You finish so do you have an exam, exam license, much? process everything and within one month you start making $35, $40 per hour. As a hygienist. Do you have an idea of how much I the ADEX exam $2, is? $2,000. Like, $2, I don't know like, exactly. You know, but I mean, it's this not is that bad. I mean, exactly. Yeah, I'll say do your research. Like you can just it's something you can Google, like ADEX exam, yeah. what are the requirements, how much it is, you know, and just so that you have an up to date information. Also, like um, you know, where this is in practice. Like we know that you know it's in Florida, but you can yes. also check for up to date information as well. I know you also mentioned about. Can we also talk about the uh, before we go more into other career options? I know people are really interested in when you said uh, with a master's in. I, don't, I think a master's in dental public health, or was it public health? One of them, with that, you can actually practice dentistry yes. in Texas. Can we just yep. go into so that you, a bit more? You have more? to still check the new rules or any, everything, but I know personally, my okay. friends, like, like not one, like I know like six or seven friends who has yes. done master's in public health okay. with me. And after that, they opted for dental public health because their family was in Texas and for them, okay. Texas was a good choice and they didn't want it any other states. They just wanted okay. to stay in Texas. So that was perfect for them. Okay. And they did okay. dental public health residency. Okay. So dental public health residency is usually okay. uh, like 15000 or $20,000 a residency. It's not too bad. And usually okay. it is only okay. one year. Just one year. Okay. But so master's after the dental public, public health, so then you can now public practice. Health, then so dental public, public health, public health, and then, and then you can practice public in Texas. Health. So you, so then, what do you practice? If you get as, license, you practice this as is the license requirement. requirement. Oh. So, so then oh. you can work as whatever. Oh. You know, nobody cares. Like when you general dentist, so you can work as a general implant, dentist. You can do crown. You oh. can do extractions. Like whatever you do as a dentist. Hmm. So, so the thing is, when you apply mm -hmm. for a job, they don't care who you are, how you mm -hmm. got it or whatever it is. They just need a license. Mm. Mm. You know, and they just want mm. you to do patients. Okay. They just All right, want so I hope you to do patients, make money and do the work. They don't care if you are mm. a prime minister or right. whoever. <laughs> they just want to make sure you work. That's it. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy to ask because someone then asked the question: Do you do dental public health? Does dental public health residency accept BDS? So what Dr. Radika has just said is, you first apply for a master's in public health, and then you apply for the dental public health residency, and then you apply for the license for the licensing. So basically, those are the requirements for the licensing to yep. practice as a general dentist. Okay. All right, so let me just let you talk about the other career options uh, that you also want to talk about. The thing is, if you don't want to go Florida, you can stay in whatever state you are and mm -hmm. you can do peer program for a hygienist. Okay. Like, for example, okay. if you want to do okay. spend your money in masters, which you don't like, you hate it and you don't want to do it, then put that money in a hygienist program because it is also the less money than masters. Okay. It is It is cheaper than masters mm -hmm. and you will be within mm -hmm. dentistry okay. you can stay you can still see patients okay. you can still see teeth you can stay within your comfort mm -hmm. zone mm -hmm. and you can improve mm -hmm. as a hygienist you can mm -hmm. become office manager and then you can keep applying to the dental schools and still make good money and don't struggle mm -hmm. 
the point is mm. to survive also mm. you know mm. like we are all here in this country like mm. i used to work as a dental assistant to two different offices and on weekend i was a floater so mm. on weekend um, i mm. have submitted my name to couple dental offices here and they said if you are working on saturday and if you need me i am available so i was a floater on call okay. assistant okay. so it's like you mm. work 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 learn 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 Make, make it work. Yeah, and keep on improving other, yourself. Other thing you keep is, on improving what, yourself. The, my first yeah. job as a dental assistant, I picked it intentionally. It was very intentional that I work where they have a digital dentistry. So, so oh, why? Yes. Because I oh, wanted yes. to get yes. paid and learn. So I, mm. I learned mm. everything yeah. about digital yeah. dentistry, yeah. like uh, scanning. Um, making a crown designing a crown in a software making it glazing shading making it pretty so like i learned to use digital dentistry while i was getting paid as a dental assistant so mm. you can be mm. smart mm. enough and mm. pick a job where you can mm. survive you can make money and learn mm. so mm. you can figure out mm. which offices mm. have mm. the technology or whatever is your interest you know for example if you are a oral surgeon and if you mm. like extraction you can pick a office of a basically oral surgeon and where they do a lot of implants and big surgeries and you assist there you help them you do cbct you make surgical guides you learn with them you grow with them and you just be part of that that environment so you yeah, All right. So basically, you just look for other survival jobs that are also in line with um dentistry and will also give you all the exposure that you want. The other thing I wanted to ask you was, um, do you mind if we go over? You know how you showed us like a page where you were talking about um, I think it was a or was on the past website where you were talking about the limits of the licenses. Can we go over that again? Because like I think I will answer the next question. Because the next person is asking if we were to do a residency. See maybe in orthodontics or pediatrics, and after three three to five years, you want to move to a different state. Is there reciprocity? So you have to try to understand what the limitations are in terms of the license. Got it. So is it okay if we just go yep. over that and then we just like and wind up there? There. If you are still here, I want to show you this. You know how they say bonus, whatever. <laughs> like, so here mm. is my Instagram page. You can click on my link tree. Mm. and here mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. see my journey you can see application tips here is my journey and here i have put downloads for everybody these are mm -hmm. resumes before mm -hmm. and after how you can improve samples of uh, statement of purpose you can download like easy to download you don't have to ask me or like send me this send me that. you it is free available ready to download for everybody who needs it and i have created like um, guide for how to write statement of purpose and you can just download and hope, hopefully it is helpful and i have put a letter of recommendation adex exam this is for a dentist this one is not for a hygienist mm. but at least you can get the idea of what it is and how mm. how it works so mm. feel free mm. to mm. use any mm. of the resources as you want and here is okay. your Perfect. Uh, Perfect. thing for the license yeah is it okay if we make it a bit straight because i think it's a bit on thank you perfect so everyone who's asking about the limits of the license please pay attention so that dr red can explain yeah. everything okay because so it's a bit here, confusing you always okay. keep it in mind that you cannot go from here to here if you go to residency you cannot expect mm -hmm. them to give you license because they already mention it in the website so so you can practice in only this states over here so mm -hmm. do not okay. like do residency and uh, expect them to reciprocate because that is not the part of the deal mm so mm so please do your research check all these states again on the website to make sure they haven't changed anything mm -hmm. so if you want to do it you yeah. have to make sure you do only this state 
plus New York and California because New York, California requires residency plus GPR. So, so that okay. is it. Okay, so basically what she's saying is that for any state that you want to practice in, always go back to the, the past website to see what the limitations are if you want to do a residency because for each state, they write it there what you need to do in terms of oh, what residency you need to do or if you have to do the advanced standing DDS two years program. All the information is there for you to understand and then i'm also going to put yep. a link there as well a link to this page yep. in the video edit so any last words dr radica because we're just going to round up now and then just uh, call it a day any last words here this is my last word <laughs> <laughs> <What's> so <laughs> dentistry career in u.s it may look like straight and easy your plan but in reality it is tough it's gonna feel with challenges mm. but uh, it's okay mm. you know you we can do it it's okay yeah honestly that's the best that's the best last word like if we people people have people have gone ahead and have done it if we can do it if dr radica didn't do it if everybody that has done it has can do it you can also do it as well, but it's also just important for you to have the right information just so that you are not like facing some challenges or making some errors that you don't need to make. That's the reason why we're here to give you all the information that you need so that you can get to your goals or achieve your goals sooner and enjoy the than process, you think. You know, it is correct. So that's not an overnight, and enjoy the overnight process thing. as well. So it's not it's, enjoy. It's not overnight at all. Like you also have to enjoy the process, enjoy your life, enjoy your time. Exactly. Don't put don't put your life on hold because you're trying to get into dentistry. Just try and enjoy it as much as you can. And that's gonna bring us to the end of our live session for Thank today. You. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. Like I have learned a lot, and I know that I love who have learned a lot. You know, you you really touched on so many things that I think a lot of people are not aware of. So um, just to do a brief recap, basically what we talked about today is what your options are for dental residency. Basically what it entails, we went through the application process, we went through um, Dr. Radica's experience, um, how she applied, how she interviewed, we talked about other career options that you can go into, we've talked about what the limits are, what the limits are in terms of what states you can practice, we've talked about what documents you need, we've talked about how to make your application unique, how to make your application stand out. We talked about everything and even much more. There's definitely going to be, um, um, so this is recorded. And so we're, I'm also going to like do some editing work and then release the video as well. Just so for those of you who just need to like, you know, go over everything we've talked about again, you're going to just watch out for the record, for the recorded obsession. You can turn on your post notifications. You can follow me. You can follow Dr. Radica. I'm going to post it in such a way that it's present on both pages. Just look out for it because this is something that you want to save just so you can go over and over it again as many times as you want. I'm also going to put in Dr. Radica's information. You can follow her on her page. You can reach out to her. Like I said, when I was applying to school, I stalked her page. She has so many resources there for you to use for whether you're applying to the advanced DDS program or whether you're applying to the dental residency. She has everything there and it's free of charge. She doesn't like free stuff. I do. So that brings us to the end of our session today. Thank you so much, guys, for spending your day with us. We ended, started, ended, started so many sessions. And you guys kept on coming back. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, Dr. Radica. I know I've taken a lot of your time. She's on vacation right now. Now so I'm going to play my piano. Her. So thank you. <laughs> now you're going to play your piano. Thank you so much. So that, that ends it for us today. I'm going to say have a happy holiday. Happy New Year. Happy New Year in advance to you guys. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Bye.